Authorities are calling it the worst mass shooting in the history of the United States. At least 58 people are dead and more than 500 are injured in the western state of Nevada on the famed Las Vegas Strait. Las Vegas police say a man opened fire on the audience of a country music concert late Sunday night. Police have identified the shooter as Stephen Paddock, a 64-year-old white male from Mesquite, Mesquite, Nevada. The gunman launched his automatic weapons attack on the crowd of 22,000 from his hotel room on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Casino, located across the street from the outdoor venue. Video showed concert goers ducking for cover, screaming and running as the repeated shouts rang out. Las Vegas Sheriff Joseph Lombardo says SWAT officers breached the door of the shooter's hotel room and found him dead. The sheriff says motive for the massacre is not known at this time and at an earlier press conference, a federal official debunked a rumor that there was a connection between Paddock and the ISIS terrorist group. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security also says there is no information to indicate a specific credible threat involving other public venues in the country. But additional security may be seen at, at events and public places. Now, for more on the deadliest mass shooting in American history, let's go to uh, Voice of America producer Ronnie uh, Duncan, who is standing by in Las Vegas uh, via Skype. Now, Ronnie, first describe to us how uh, the mood of the country, of the city is the day or a few hours after this attack. It just happened a few hours ago, Vincent, and when you consider the mere fact that people came to the city to gamble, but now the stakes are higher when lives are on the line. When you mention the biggest mass shooting ever in the history of America, it has touched this city dramatically. People were asking, can I simply go home? This morning, early, around 4 o'clock this morning, Las Vegas time, people were in the lobbies of different hotels across the city trying to get back home because they were so devastated mentally by what had happened. Consider a country music affair an outdoor concert. You're there to have a good time. And it's the final song by the lead artist. And then all of a sudden, shots start to ring out from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay. People started pointing directly toward where they saw those shots. I talked to many people, and they were simply saying they were fighting for their lives. But this is America. This is the home of the brave. And they want to be brave. And they want to make sure that they can stand up. I want to take a look right now for you and everyone else around the world. As you can see, Las Vegas. Yes, the Strip is not what it was. was. And as you can see, the Mandalay Bay is right up the street. And up the street there is that is why you don't see as much traffic. If you've ever been to Las Vegas, you know there's plenty of traffic in the city. Yes, people continue to go around and look and to see what they can do. But the mood is totally different, Vincent. They're frightened, but they're not fearful totally. Now, Ronnie, this uh, quite a, uh, it's a huge number of people, especially those who have been injured and now, of course, concerned with how many of them are going to lose their lives. How is the city handling that, uh, the, the, the aftermath in terms of uh, dealing with those who have been injured? Everyone has been tremendously helpful to his man, brother, and sister, but a little boy, a little girl. They have gotten together and said, you know what, this is not going to hold us down. Let me give you a live picture of what's happening. You can see people still shopping here in Las Vegas, Vincent. This is just outside of Planet Hollywood. You can look down the way. There's Bellagio and there's Caesar's Palace. Yes, the tourists are still here. And maybe not in the numbers that we have seen before in the past, but the tourists are still here. And they're saying that they're diligent. They're not going to let them keep this down. Yes, the mood is somber. People are sad. Many lives have been missing. Close to 60 lives. And when you consider more than 500 people injured, that says a lot about what happened last night. And we hope it never happens again. Now, very quickly, do we know any more about the shooter? All we know is that Mr. Paddock, Stephen Paddock, was 64 years of age. Now, a lot of people are wondering how did he get all of those weapons and artillery of weapons into the Mandalay Bay? Well, if you know Las Vegas, you know golf is a very popular sport. And one idea is that perhaps he brought them all in different golf bags, and he had been there since September 28th. So anyone using their common sense would say maybe this was premeditated. But those are the theories and thoughts. Police are still investigating. This is an ongoing investigation. The governor has spoken out, and the president will be here on Wednesday. As I said before, Las Vegas is a city where they definitely deal with numbers. They hope yeah. that the numbers of the deaths don't go up. Ronnie, excellent reporting. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now uh, that is uh, viewer producer Ronnie Duncan who joined us live uh, via Skype from Las Vegas.
While US President Donald Trump wrote Monday on Twitter, my warmest condolences and sympathies to the victims and families of the terrible Las Vegas shooting. God bless you. End of court. At the White House today, President Trump spoke about the deadly shooting. First responders and the families of the victims. In moments of tragedy and horror, America comes together as one. And it always has. We call upon the bonds that unite us, our faith, our family, and our shared values. We call upon the bonds of citizenship, the ties of community, and the comfort of our common humanity. Our unity cannot be shattered by evil. Our bonds cannot be broken by violence. And though we feel such great anger at the senseless murder of our fellow citizens. It is our love that defines us today. Las Vegas is one of America's most well-known cities, known primarily as an international tourist destination for its entertainment. For more insight on the impact the massacre may have on the city, viewer Stephen Hammond, a native of Las Vegas, joins us live via Skype uh, from uh, the White House. Now, Steve, uh, this is personal to you, right, in, in some way? Yes, I'm, I'm not a native of the city, but I did grow up there. I went to middle school, high school, part of college, and began my broadcasting career uh, in Las Vegas. I have family there. I know the city very well. I'm there every year or two. Uh, it is a very vibrant and uh, diverse community. And, of course, Las Vegas is really uh, a city for the world, of the world, because uh, millions and millions of people visit there every year from all over the world. So they say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but in reality, what happens in Vegas affects every part of the world. And I know you're very passionate about that city. Can you just uh, describe for us uh, the layout of the, uh, uh, the place where the attack uh, took place and what this might actually mean in the coming days for those who visit? Yes, uh, th this occurred, uh, the shooter was in the Mandalay Bay, Mandalay Bay Resort on Las Vegas Boulevard, known as the Strip, and he was looking down from uh, his hotel room on a, a little concert venue across the street. Not so little, actually. There were about 22,000 people there, and he had a clear shot. Now, what's also remarkable is this hotel is right across the street from McCarran International Airport, and uh, flights were stopped at the airport for a number of hours until uh, they were sure that this incident was uh, totally under control. But this is, uh, as has been said, the largest mass shooting in, in U.S. history and modern history. Uh, it's something that's uh, stunning not only everybody in Las Vegas, the state of Nevada, but uh, around the world, because I think so many Many people uh, here in the United States and around the world are familiar with Las Vegas, even if they haven't been there. Uh, they've seen it in movies and in television shows, so they they have an, an intimate connection with the city. Now we know that uh, many times when an attack like this happens in any city, there are certain uh, things that, that could change. Right? It's early to speculate, but do you fear that perhaps this might hold people back from going to Las Vegas? Uh, I don't know. Well, people go to Las Vegas uh, because of its uh, many attractions, not only the casino gambling, but the shows, the resorts, uh, uh, the many amenities there. Uh, perhaps it might have a, a, a short-term effect, but uh, really this is the type of uh, uh, horrible incident that, that could have happened anywhere at any time. And Las Vegas has been relatively insulated from this uh, the type of violence that we've seen in recent years. Uh, uh, around the world. I think what might change us, uh, so I lived in uh, India and also in, in other countries in Asia, and what you have there is when you check into a hotel, your baggage is screened, and you go through a metal detector as well. So what's being asked here is this man was able to bring into the hotel at least uh, 10 rifles, possibly more uh, weaponry, several hundred rounds of ammunition, uh, and, and should this be something yeah. that we need to prevent uh, uh, in okay. the future from happening. All right, Steve, thank you very much. You're welcome. That's a VA White House correspondent, Stephen Hammond.